Hello, and welcome back to Arknights. Um, today I'm going to do RS8. Thank you, Noel, for the Malinar. Um, I got a strategy down, believe it or not. That has worked. <laughs> it took me 20 attempts to find a way to beat it. I just... Oh, I forgot to grab Malinar. Motherfucker. Oh, wait. I should probably record the voice part. I forgot that I didn't read the story. It's so calm, and then it's gonna go fucking intense. They say that Lake Silburna of hers, <coughs> Silburna hers, is most beautiful during winter. Winter seals the lake in a case of ice, and from afar, it looks like all the world looks. It looks for all the world like a great. What an awful line! Great gemstone, revealing a most breathtaking beauty with the brilliant sunlight. But. But if you observe from up close, perhaps you will be able to appreciate its beauty even further. There is no gem so flawless, yet so adamant. Beneath the ice, it flows. its waters yet flow. Since when did you decide to take up poetry? <laughs> hmm. Does it, according to the directives of the Vine Bear Corps, we will follow behind the Saintus, walking from the ice to below the feet of the statue of Jaringar. Jaringander! This is hardly what I would call a short stroll, and all sorts of mishaps can befall us while we walk. Gnosis, are you worried that the ice beneath your feet will it might shatter? How very unlike you. You know that's not what I'm talking about. Many of the guests of ours who are here to attend will be watching us with keen eyes. Your plans for defensive maneuvers still lack accurate information, NCOs. We are not in what you I would call a favorable situation. Allowing that Trilby Asher to approach the statue of Karen Gonder yesterday was my mistake. If we have need of it, I can go and settle things with him right now. If our quarry has already sensed aught, aught amiss, then acting now <clears throat> would already be too late. This terrible habit of yours of neglecting the bigger picture when you take action, forget it. You and NCOs are pretty much the same. I'm not asking either of you to change your ways. All I ask is that next time, please go out, go to the trouble of restraining yourselves just a little bit. You'll save me, <laughs> you'll save me from having to rack my brain and to find ways to clean up your messes. Duly noted, Gnosis. What do you think, Enciodes? I've not the strength to casually cut apart a giant statue tens of meters high. Indeed. You merely invited the doctor over, who then proceeded to nearly ruin our plans at all. I have no desire to listen to the two of you jibe and snipe at each other with your nonsense. Bitch! I don't know why I was going to say that. Now, about the Shigata, responsible for keeping order. They will be posted in the island ahead of time. As for who is in charge of the reception of the Victorians, there are several merchants who will take care of that matter. Notice, Gnosis, you are far too tense. We have already completed all the preparations we can do. All we can do now is wait. And wait, we shall. Spring is just around the corner. Is it going to be trouble? No, Arctaz! I still remember when the Sanctus descended from atop Mount Carlin three years ago. That's a Jaragonder. Jaragonder! Uh, sent us her blessings, and even the NCO, that NCOs couldn't help but kneel. I do not know if we will ever see such miracles again in these days. Sorry. I have heartburn right now, and it's making it's making burp weird. Seems like seeing the sights of today has hooked up, has hooked up your old memories, my friend. But Arctaz, don't you think you've been wallowing in these memories for too often these past few years? Rather than putting your efforts into sarcasm, Rotados, you should care more about today's ceremony. I felt that something was off ever since I woke up this morning. Don't you think Kiaragonder's statue looks a little bit different compared to yesterday? You brown tails were in charge of managing construction, so you'd better think of a real good explanation for the Saintus. Heh, no need to worry about that. Hey, Arctaz, why does your face look like that? Did that Trilby Asher rough you up or something? Wait, does he have a bruise? He does! Is that what that is right there? <laughs> well, it's like you said, no need to worry about that. God, the girl's real feisty. 
just like Titania. <laughs> just like me. <laughs> Not bad. That's funny. Air in my mouth. And it's tickling my tongue. Matriarch, matriarch. Everyone is present. Good. Let the people below know that they can head to their destination. Designated positions and wait for now. The Saintists will arrive soon. If anyone dares to tarnish the brown tail name at this critical moment, I won't be showing any mercy. Understood, matriarch. Wait a moment. Yucatan. Why is it just you? Where's your wife? It's almost time already. Why is she not here? Russ told me that told me this morning that she had to do a few things. She wants to prepare a pleasant surprise for you, Matriarch. I'm not sure if I should look forward to a pleasant surprise from her. What could possibly be more important than today's ceremony? Can't you pick a better time to give me a headache? I'll send her a message right away. Don't worry, Matriarch. Russ is very clear on what she should be prioritizing. I should have figured that you'd be on your wife's side. All right, all right. She's no longer a girl. Guess I'll just have to wait and see what this pleasant surprise of hers is. Anyway, if she's off doing some things, why didn't she bring you along? Russ already has someone helping her out. Everyone, the time has come. The Saintess arrives. Please lend me your ears. It has been three years since the Vine Bear Court has recognized those foreign foreigners who wish to devote themselves to Karagondor. Karag today is capable of incredible growth and development, but that growth rests on the shoulders of the good folk here today, alongside the toil and devotion of all Karag's people. I believe that you all have seen the change that has come to Karag these past few years with your own eyes. Karagondor has given her people, her children, a challenge and we have already given her our, her our answer. Yet these past three years were merely the beginning. In the coming days, we will meet with more complex situations than ever before, and Kerrig will see its fair share of trials and tribulations. However, I hope that we all believe that Kerrig Ander has not abandoned this land of Kerrig, and neither will she abandon the lives of those who live upon it. For she to she so loves her people. This great statue of Karagander will be the main symbol of the Karag to the outside world. At the same time, it will become a vessel for all the love that her faithful show her. Hereafter, one need not climb Mount Carlin to show one's devotion to her. You need to face towards her during your prayers. It is my wish that the faith that you have in her is not constrained by the trappings of ceremony. I believe that true faith has taken root in the hearts of all of Kerrig's people. Now, I ask of you to walk with me. Walk with me under the gaze of Kerrig Gondor, towards the foot of her holy statue, where we will pray for her to bestow her blessing upon Kerrig. By Kerrig Gondor. By Kerrig Gondor. By Kerrig Gondor! The many voices of the lake that cry out Kerrig Gondor's name blend and merge together. The Saintess stands at the head of the crowd and takes the first step onto the ice. The frozen lake Silberna hers shines with like a flawless gem when looked upon from afar, but only once you stand atop it will you see that this gem is covered in chips and cracks. The ice is covered in cracks wending, wending, bending and weaving across the surface, the endlessly churning waters beneath the ice surging about together. Under the dawn light, it is as if the soul of the lake itself was wandering un about in an eternal cycle. In the eyes of the people of Kerrig, such a sight was so beautiful as to be breathtaking. Why is it so weird today? Kerrig on her saintess steps across the cracks that seemed like they were carved by the biting winds, as if walking past a millennium's worth of Kerrig's bitterly cold hardships, as if walking past its endless winter days. Because now, spring has just around the corner. I need to find my fidget thing? Okay. It keeps me sane while I'm reading. How the hell are they not here yet? Are you kidding me? The communicator doesn't work. Didn't they say they'd be getting to Kerrig under last night? Or Kerrig last night? So they definitely catch the train today. <sighs> uh, calm down, Sirius. Calm down. 
Okay, I've calmed down. The scientist needs to walk across the ice and the island. So the ceremony won't be starting quite so soon. I've still got time. Think about just think about the look on Rotato's face when this is all over. <laughs> I've definitely got the time right. And punctuality is par on is par for the course on that side. A little lateness is one thing. We won't be too late now for I'm sure. I think the train to Lake Silburnaher is should be pulling into the station right about now. All right, let me see. The train is arriving at... Why is it so late? Madam Sirius, the train is a local that stops at every station. It's natural that it's somewhat delayed. I don't care if it's natural. I need that train here right now. I... Damn it all. I can't just sit here and wait. Get me in touch with the station master. I want this train sped up right away. If it doesn't... If it... If it doesn't need to stop, then it better not stop. Make sure it's going at full speed, too. But, madam, if we do that, it would be greatly inconvenience the passengers aboard the train. As long as they end up where they wanted to go, it should be fine, right? Eh, well, well yes, but no buts. M munch, munch. <laughs> oh, who are you? Here, madam. Get in touch with the manager of Bang Bang Bird and Beast for me. Get them to round up every single one of their free burden beasts right now. Anyone waiting to get on the train at the station that it passes, get them a burden beast to take them wherever they want. Yes, madam. Madam Sirius, is this really all right? You got a problem with it? Right. Thanks for reminding me. We'll need to prepare a small gift for everyone already aboard the train. We'll call it a token of apology for dis <laughs> disrupting their journey. Use the souvenirs that you sell on the trains for that. All expenses can go to Clown Brown t No, wait. Put it all in my personal account. Understood. It shall be done. Declines. <laughs> I hope that's enough. No, it's definitely enough. For sure. Our card declines. Ooh. Intense music. Bastard. Don't forget what we're here to do. In the back. Keep pace. Yes, sir. Halt. Gather up. Form up. Sir, reporting in. Second squad in formation, sir. Very good, then. And third squad? Sir, reporting in. Third squad in formation, sir. Very good. Jack, have your squad bring up the rear. I want constant vigilance. Don't overlook a single enemy. Yes, sir. Good. Keep things spirits up. All squads, forward march. They answered that time for me. Is going to be Harold? What are those Victorians up to now? Are they holding weapons? Surely not. Aren't they here to attend the ceremony or something? Have you ever seen them line up in formation like that before? Must be all just for show. But I've got to say, I don't think they've got the same look on them as they did before. By Karagonder. Karagonder protects us from harm. Reporting in, sir. We finished scouting ahead. The Sanctus has already started leading everyone to over the island. Are all men prepared? Yes, sir. All troops in formation, ready to commence operations at any time. Good. Keep them lined up and await my orders. Lake Silburna hers on a winter's day. Truly one of Kiarig's most beautiful sights. Who would have thought that the next time I clapped eyes on this wonder would be under circumstances like this? you become much gloomier these days, Harold. Have I? <laughs> you know, as they say, soft days make soft men. Lisburn, after a whole month of R&R, &R, you're still able to swing your sword around? It's much heavier than I remember. How about you, Charles? It's a battlefield for Victorian soldiers. Not much else I can do. You're right. In the decades since I joined the army, never have I met finer soldiers than you all. Am I right, Charles? I think I'm going to puke. But what else can I do? Give the orders already, Harold. Forgive me, my friends. All right, orders incoming. Everyone, forward march. Under the guise of building a statue for their goddess, the Kiarigs have been secretly transporting military goods under our noses. We will let them know the price of trying to make a fool of Victoria. Mission objective. Destroy the statue of Karagander atop the island. Yes, sir. He's my favorite character. What? The train won't be making further stops? Are you certain of this? 
Okay, understood. What's going on? Why didn't we stop at the station just now? I am truly incredibly sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, our train has run into a small operational issue. Until we arrive at the station at Lake Silbernahers, the, the train will be increasing in speed and will not be stopping at intervening stations. Not stopping? This is unacceptable! I meant to get off for sightseeing at the next station! Me too! I was going to go and visit the local markets too. Why ever can't you stop the train anyway? We offer our deepest apologies for this inconvenience to everyone. As compensation, we have prepared for all passengers a gift of a token for our apology. All passengers may freely pick a souvenir of your choice from our store aboard this train. Whether it's specialty cheeses or a burden box blind burden beast blind box, it's all free of charge. Oh well, if there's compensation, I suppose that's alright. Ah, that's right! I ask all passengers to note that there is a limited amount of gift wrapped mountain ice water, so if you would like some, please come as soon as possible. Alright, alright, no need to go on any more than that. Okay, sure, speed up the train. No stopping at the stations, whatever. Just give me one of those su super expensive limited edition waters already. Hey, no cutting in line. Give me water too. Tourist traps. $12 for a bottle of water. They sure are lively today. What could possibly be so as urgent as to rush this train to Lake Silberna hers? Is it that delivers some mystery goods or perhaps people? Either way, I believe I win this hand. Dagan Brecker should have shanked your ass. The trains... <coughs> the trains here have all been handled, madam. As for your orders, the premier train... <coughs> next arriving at Lake Silberna Hurst is now running at top speed. But are you sure that the guests you invited on are aboard that train? Of course I'm sure. It's just that if we happen to be wrong... No way, they're definitely on that train. Monch. Monch. I must ask, do you know how many... How many new relay stations we built in... Holy fuck, why can't I read suddenly? How many new relay stations we built to ensure a smooth signal across all of Kierig these past few three years? I, I'm afraid I'm not quite sure. Well, you've just returned to Kierig, so I suppose it's natural that you do not know. So listen up and remember this. In Browntail territory alone, we've built five of these top-of-the-line relay stations to ensure that the signal never breaks. That many? Yep. We also called in some professionals, courtesy of the doctor from Old Island, to help out. Just to make sure that even amongst our main, many mountains, our communications will never be blocked. So what I'm trying to say is that theoretically, as long as it's within Carrie's borders, there shouldn't be any sort of communication mishap, aside from some special places. Special places? Heh. <laughs> Can't figure it out. There. Could it possibly be the private rooms on the train, madam? Oh no. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Bullseye. Uh... It's, it's the private rooms on the train. More specifically, the private rooms on the premier train from the foot of the Mount Mount Carlin to Lake Silberna hers. That train has a special order from Victoria. As for the tra other trains that we have, they use that train as a prototype to copy. I mean, to study how to manufacture our own. The walls of the private rooms are <clears throat> that original train are inlaid with materials designed to insulate to isolate the occupants from disturbances from outside, so naturally, they will cut off communication signals too. The other trains don't have this feature because, uh, because it would have drastically inflated construction costs. I get it now. So what you're saying is, in determining if our guests are in Keurig already, the very fact that our communicators can't reach them tells us that they must be in the specific train's private rooms. That's amazing, madam. I'm learning so much about the trains as well. <laughs> Anyways, Keurig is... It, Keurig as it is now, and Keurig as of a few years ago, couldn't be more different. I'm not going to ask where you've been these past few years, Monch. <laughs> and I don't intend to pry into what you've been up to then. I don't even really care about why you didn't go back to that Gnosis either. But if you really want to be my assistant, then you'd better get used to the modern day Keurig already. And you'd better not think that I'm still the same old Russ from three years ago, can you hear me? Yes, madam. I'll do my best. Glad to hear it. Yeah, why is there so many people outside? Hey, wait, aren't they the soldiers? Bomb, 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 bomb. Get back! I said, get back, all of you. Not a step closer. You, what the hell do you think you're doing? How dare you try and pull this stunt under Kiri Gonder's gaze? Don't even think about trying to ruin today's ceremony, Jack. That's you, isn't it, Jack? What are you playing at? You, you just had a bit too much to drink, right? 
A word of advice for me. Today's not the time to make a ruckus. Go tell others, Jack. Quick. Enough. I'm under orders to shoot dead the next person who steps forward. Ah! You know, back when you first showed up, people said that a bunch of foreign soldiers showing up and caring couldn't be up to any good. I didn't believe them. I even spoke up for you guys. Seems that I was blind this entire time. So this was your real purpose? Ruin our ceremony for Karagondor? Strike us down? Karagondor will not forgive you for this. You invite her wrath upon yourselves. Heh. <laughs> Let her try. You were punished enough as it is a long time ago. Hmm? Those are Victorian soldiers. Something's not right. They have their uniforms on. And they've got their weapons out, too. Looks like they've been... There's been some sort of commotion outside. Please, hide yourself, madam. The black-haired girl is about to subconsciously hold out her arms to protect her employer. But before the words can even leave her mouth, Sirius proves to be a step ahead of her, covering her mouth with her own hand and pulling it into a corner. Shh! Don't say a word, Monch. We need to stay hidden. Those Victorians. Didn't they say that they were here just to attend the ceremony? Hmm. <laughs> I guess they finally showed their true colors. This operation of theirs seems pretty big. That bitch Rattatos wouldn't know one about this trouble yet, would she? Madam, they have a whole squad of Shigata stationed there, alongside Degenbrecher from Carlin Trade. If trouble reaches them, it probably won't last very long. Yeah, you're probably right. And with Yucatan there, my sister will be safe. Madam, allow me to escort you somewhere safe. I'll go assist Sir Yucatan as well. No. I have to stay here and watch them. If things get even more heated here, at least I can stop them for a bit. Look, don't worry, nothing's going to happen to me, even if I do get fine found. Considering that I'm an envoy between Kerrigan and Victoria for multiple cooperative business ventures, I doubt they'll be to have the stones to mess with me. Adam, don't look at me like that. I already told you I'm not the same as I was three years ago. Okay, listen up, Monch. I've got something you need you to do. Yes, madam. You need only say the word. That NCO definitely has some sort of contingency plan up his sleeve for those Victorians. Considering how big his commotion, this commotion's grown, I can only suspect that something's gone wrong and with the deployment of this men... Munch, I need you to investigate things for me. Go check up on what's happening over there, and if you get the chance, making the Silver Ashes owe the Brown Tails a favor would be pretty nice. Understood. I'll get it done. What? Something under my face? Madam. You really have grown. Who asked you? You're a lot younger than me, you know? Stop acting like you're the big sister. Really, you should be treating me like the big sister. Can I really call you sister? <laughs> but we'll discuss this later. All right, get moving already. Yes, madam. From time to time, Degenbrecker thinks back to 10 years ago. Back then, every winter she would accompany Inciodes all across Kerrig. That young man who had just returned to his home country was not yet the deeply experienced person he was now. Still quite underripe, he had to do many things himself, rushing about to and fro. One could say that he was hot-blooded, or one could say that he had ambition. Ambition. Deckenbrecken remembered that in the winter of that year, Inciodes brought all his plans and stratagems that he had devised in Victoria back to Kerrig where he single-handedly founded Carlin Trade. Of the few people who could be called his confidants, she would have just barely been there within their number, and thus she found herself staying in this cold, snowy land. If you were to ask her why, while she has long gotten used to the bitter chill, she does not actually like cold weather very much. Casimir's winters were cold indeed. Those days she would make her way through many matches of the majors in winter, this made the KGCC very unhappy, but whether or not her opponent was happy was never in her mind. Going back even further, Lithanian's winters, too, were cold. Was Kerrig's winter not colder than Casimir's or Lith Lithanian's? Degenbrecker stamped her foot onto the icy surface, frost crystals breaking loose under her step. Thinking back to the old times, I remember that year when we had first arrived back in Kerrig, from Victoria. We had crossed the Lake Silberna hers as well. <clears throat> Back then, it was because all the roads had been snowed out. With no railroads, recognized shovels or vehicles specially designed to handle snow 
We were barely able to maintain a handful of flat main streets. Under such a heavy snowfall, and with Carlin trade only barely having started up, goods piled up behind the snowbanks, blocking the road, and the trade routes stagnated. We were on the brink of coming to the complete stop. In the end, it was you who helped Leones gather up the burden beasts, and by using them to carry those goods across Lake Silberna hers, we were able to alleviate the particular crisis. You talk too much, Enciodes. I assumed that you would have shown more solemni sol solemnity <gasps> in light of the ceremony. Come on, make, take it as an opportunity to babble about old happenings. My apologies. Some things are simply too unexpected in the moment, and so it is hard not to constantly bring them back to the forefront of one's mind, especially during interesting times such as these. Who would have expected that the great Black Knight to be so proficient at riding a burden beast? NCOs, what? If you are curious as to why I know how to ride a burden beast, then you need only ask. I learnt it when I was young. In Lithanian? In Lithanian. There is ever the opportunity. I could bring the both of you to do some sightseeing. It's not a very exciting place, so don't expect too much. How is it compared to Kierig? It's not as good. Kierig is nowhere near as cold. This is the first time I've ever heard you give such an idealistic assessment. That's enough out of you. All right, we've arrived. Everyone, please come forward. With Karagander as our witness, the ceremony shall soon begin. Let us pray. It appears that some of our more excitable guests can't wait for their cue. Just who is causing the clamor there? God, I didn't need this pain in the ass right now. Yugaton, why the hell isn't your wife here yet? I just got in contact with her. She says she's nearly here. What do you mean, nearly here? Listen, you get back in touch with her right now and tell her to get he her to go to the moons or something as far away as possible. Just don't come over. What is going on over here? We'll do all the commotion about. Sir, those Victorians don't look as friendly as they usually do. I saw that they've got some pretty big weapons on of some kind. They look real enough to me. I knew that they were going to stab us in the back. Let them come! It's a good thing I told Palaroche boys to be prepare for this. Told Sir Arctos. But Saintus! Saintus, Sir Enciotes, the Victorian troops have broken through our guard and who are maintaining order. They draw near. Send out several squads and prioritize the safety of any commoners about. Yes, Saintus. Harold, my boy, why? They have made their move. It appears that there are several squads of their own lined up to approach us. And at their head is that Viscount. What's the plan? War wise in Matterhorn. We haven't received any news from them since last night. They should have been watching the movements of the Victorian army very closely, and an operation of this size would have been prompted to report by now, unless they had no way of sending that report. But we're Victorians, even, even as they bear gifts. Despite my belief that I had managed to establish a strong relationship with Viscount Craig Avon, it appears that we do not have not been able to move his heart from its course. This is no time to stand around licking your wounds, Gerenciodes. They're already far past the point of pretending to be friendly with us. They are professional Victorian troops. Whether using drone arrays to bombard us, or hiding their casters in the crowd, their ruthless efficiency efficacy is clear this is still what they consider pressure they have not begun to use force just yet and i assume that you have some sort of plan for this we cannot allow them to disrupt the ceremony not only will the vine bear court and the three clans suffer a drastic blow to their reputations they will lose the trust of the people of Kerrig, alongside the respect of those outside its borders we would be caught in a truly dire straits not exactly the easiest task indeed you seem sound concerned, Enciodes. We must not allow a true war with the Victoria to begin. We need only wait until the next person, the next distinguished guest arrives. But at the very least, we cannot allow them to get any closer to the statue of Karagander. But they're pretty much here already. I'll go stop them. Now that's, that's not the time. Good time for jokes. They've got at least 2,000 troops out there. How exactly are you going to fight them alone? It will be easier than me having to handle you after a night out, Gnosis. 
Like I said, this really isn't a good time to joke around. Who do you think? Out of the many people that he knows, NCO always calls first. <sighs> You're going to get yourself killed. If you don't want me to be killed, then you should put in some more work, Gnosis. Dagenbrecker, I'm sure you're already aware of the risk at hand. I need you to hold them back, at least until we have settled our arrangements here. At this time, Carl and Trade, no, Kerrig cannot assist you in the slightest. This is to be the sole work of the Black Knight. Are you able to do it? Heh, <laughs> this wouldn't be the first time. You all wait here. What a badass! What the fuck? It's not good to hold your anger in, Gnosis. The two of you have talked it over already. I'm not one to make a fuss. At least while Degenbrecker holds back those Victorians, I can send out men to find Weez, Wise and Matterhorn, as well as our distinguished guests. If they arrive a bit sooner than expected, things might start to be looking up for us. I'll leave that to you then. News of what happen is happening here will spread fast. I should be bracing myself right about now, so that I can deal with those beasts who saw fit to bear their fangs. Hark, they come. Halt! Everyone, gather up! Get back into formation! Yes, sir! This fog's mighty thick. Strange, have the Sugata not made their move yet? Why are they just watching from all around the sides? Sure, our operation might have caught them with their pants down, but surely they're going to put up some resistance, right? Don't be so quick to dismiss them. The head of the Silver Ash Clan's one wily fellow. Uh, Kerrig can't afford to go to war with Victoria, but us? We could pretty much just take crap to top their holiest of holies. It's a really funny thing, diplomacy. The way things are now, I don't think that they've got any room to play defense at the moment. Well, you won't know until you give them a poke. Let some other men advance for now. Instead so of the Saintists or Clan Silver Ash still don't react, then we continue with our original plan and prepare to bombard the statue of Karagondor. Understood. Huh? Wait. Looks like there's some movement on their side. No, that can't be. They've only got one person over there? It's her, the Black Knight. Of course, it could only be her. Although I had guessed that this sort of thing might happen. Seeing the real deal with your own eyes, it's enough to make a man's heart drum with excitement. A lone woman holding back a thousand soldiers. Wow, this really is right out of one of those night novels. You're joking. There's no one person who's got the strength to resist a whole army. Does I... Zayadins can't, the Silverlands Pegasi can't, not even one of the Devil's Royal Courts could. We've seen this sort of thing for ourselves, Harold. I know. Of course I do. You might kill us, but you won't kill any more. But do we really have to pay this price to get what we want? Our army is a machine, consuming an unending amount of fresh meat just so that the it can lurch forward once more. Right now, <laughs> there's just well, us old boys left. Can't bear the cost of it much longer. You know me, Lizburn. I've always been a bit of a miser. And a miser's heart weeps for every coin lost. As long as they keep bubbling up to the top of my mind, I can hardly sleep soundly at night. We're soldiers. We've got no choice. You're right. It's all for Victoria. Send the order now. All men, prepare for war. I'll take the lead, and I'll bring along my top brass to meet the legendary Black Knight face to face. Yes, sir! Hey, Harold, I'm not going to stop you now, but I've got to ask. How's it feel having to face down the Black Knight that you like so much in the ring? Not great. Reminds me of the one time during my youth when I was getting teased at one of the Duke's parties. I ended up drinking an entire cup's worth of sh straight shots at once. <laughs> a lot of bitterness, a lot of burning, and a lot of retching. <laughs> Enough to make you faint. But I will say that I also felt a bit of excitement. Harold Kragavon looks towards Carrig's endless snowscape. All about him, frost blanketed the icy surface of Lake Silberna hers. Mist gathered in the air, and in the distance, the statue of Karagondor loomed, her face fuzzy and indistinct. The chill extending all about her feet made people feel as though they had truly entered the realm of the snow god. The frozen surface of the lake looked as though it was a great shard of rock sugar covered in icing. In this unreal, dreamlike environment, these men wearing their valor on their sleeve stood up like a sore thumb, and across from them, a vague silhouette appeared within the dense fogs that laid thick in the air. Their adversary walks forward, 
step by step, treading atop the ice and snow towards them. It felt as if with every step she commanded the strength to stop a thousand men in their tracks. This is as far as you go, and you will go no further. If you wish to watch the ceremony, you may watch from here alongside me. I'd be truly honored to have you accompany Madame Degenbrecker. By all rights, I should accept your kind offer, but... As most trusted partner, her grace is very concerned about Kerrig's development issues and has given me the orders to approach the base of Kerrigander so as to show our good faith. Concern? Concern armed to the teeth and carrying cannons as if it was a very rare sight indeed. Force of circumstance. I do hope you understand. Lately, there's been a most unlawful force at play. Wantonly moving prohibited materials about Kerrig under the guise of constructing the statue of Kerrigander. According to our intelligence, the stronghold of this force happens to be exactly under the holy statue of yours. And so, her grace was so concerned about this issue that she commissioned me and my men overnight to investigate. A likely story. It is, in the end, her grace's intent. Who could say that if there truly is a such dangerous power underneath the feet of Karagander's statue, but if the great saintess and Sir Ancios were to meet with unfortunate accidents, it would be far too late for regrets by then. Nobody would like to see something like that happen, am I right, Madame Dagenbrecker? I don't really care what you say. And naturally, what we do here is none of your business. The people of Karag will handle their own issues. We don't need outsiders to order us about. Ugh. I'm afraid that that's that, then. I'm truly sorry it came to this, but this is where I must carry out my duty. Also, please excuse my curiosity, Madam De Madame Dedekinbrecker, but considering you managed to hold your tongue so well while I jabbered on, you don't plan on causing to delay us, do you? You talk far too much. Ha! <laughs> well, when you're at my age, it's hard not to be a bit of a windbag. But as for you, Madam Dagenbrecker, as I've now learned, you're not the sort of person to indulge in mindless chatter. That is so fucking cool. Hmm. That's why you overly chatty smart asses. That's why I hate overly chatty smart asses. This is so fucking cool. Thought I just heard a noise. The woman says no more, slowly unsheathing her long sword breaker from about her waist. The scraping of metal lets out an ear piercing shriek, ending with the sound of it burying its point into the ice. A sound that induces a trembling in the men that none are able to sti st st to me. <laughs> it's like I keep like wanting to yawn, sorry. Ooh. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's just... This is such a cool picture. I don't know. Since they got the intended message, there's not much more need for words. This manner is more to my tastes. I'll say it again. You will go no further. None may enter. That's a really cool picture. And then, we fight him. Um... I'll be right back though. I need to go grab something I forgot. I'm back with coffee. My 1 a.m. coffee. Yeah. Oops, shit. Got it. Got it. A new challenge. Fuck, I forgot to grab my allies thing. Did we fail? I don't think so. People like you usually factor failure into your plans, yeah? Yeah, I'm just retarded. I can't say that word. <laughs> Mm. 
Once again, thank you, Noel. A music score or a battle plan? You have to give me one of those at least. Can your eyes keep up? All those I have yet to abandon. Feels fresh tail like a shooting star. That's what they say. I'll warm up my fingers first. Just as planned. I am your shadow. Keep your distance, or you'll risk getting caught up in the fighting. There is but a sign at the very end. We create a diversion. So far, so good. There we go. Opening with a tuba. A rare arrangement. Okay, so far so good. Am I the only tuba in your band? Out of yes, my sir. way, or I'll shove your head up this tuba. You stop <laughs> in the ass. Oh shit. You there. On standby. Feels use fresh your ability to like her there. Doesn't it? Use your oh, ability. Come on! I already oh, have enough ability. work to deal with. Doctor, please come to your senses. Why didn't it go off? Wait, melt. Waiting your medication is here. Use your ability. That is but a sign. At the very end. Heaven flip. So far, so good. We're fine. It's fine. We're <laughs> fine. Storm. Any instructions for me? Doctor? Please come to your senses! Mirage! Yes, they're the tie. The tide. There is no way your attacks have no effect! Oh, Awaiting oh, oh. your medication is here. Take it. Interesting. I mean, Harold's just gonna All one shot right. this bitch. <laughs> Mirage! Okay, so far so good still. We're still Doctor, chilling. Please come to your okay, you target locked. Oh, CJ no. should be able to shoot him once he gets there, and then he'll start to melt. That's what I want. Mirage. Yes! This is exactly what I wanted. Okay, now you two keep her alive. Harold, just keep walking, brother. I warm up my fingers first. Mirage! Bum, 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 You can go do something else. It's over! It should be one now with those two in the front. A 
Awaiting your fire! Please come to your set! Target locked! Thunderstorm! Oh, you shit. want my opinion? Can your eyes keep up? The sunlight will have to wait. I forgot about those two. They spawned two more. Am I the only can you feel it? The I did it, motherfuckers! Of that pianissimo. Fuck you all! Beat the shit out of Harold, my favorite character. Now here's the second part, everyone. You ready? Watch out! She's beating the shit out of these guys. <laughs> Next. Ah! Coffee. Reporting in, sir. With Colonel Harold's support, we brought all our contact current casualties back to safety. However, as things stand for us, we'll still we still don't have a way to strike the enemy where it hurts. Charge! Make use of your arms. The enemy is one soldier. Surround her. But, sir, wouldn't it be better if us to divert around her? She's an army of one. She's got no hope of holding us all back if we widen the front. You gormless idiot! Was that meant to be a revelation to me? Then why? They didn't give you eyes in your head for nothing. You saw that when our men <laughs> on Karagander's doorstep were attempting, didn't you? All of them as smart as you. Off to break the perimeter from somewhere else. Compare that to the rest. Are they in this near bad state? True. If they break off, she hits them real hard alone. <laughs> You're not telling me. Private, I don't know what the hell I could be telling you. Duck! Gah! My hand slipped. Done gossiping? When in hell did you get here? Just now. <laughs> if you were counting on a dozen men there to stop me, then you really weren't ready for me. Monster incarnate. A few dozen won't do the trick, then surely a few hundred will. How about over a thousand? You'll learn. In the face of a real army, there is no one army of one. Clench your teeth. What? Keep your mouth shut when I hit you. You don't want to bite your tongue. A better slice of cold <laughs> wind slices through. <laughs> one against two thousand should be a pinnacle of despair. Her golden eyes tell of no such qualms. Stern and still unsteady. She is the predator without dispute. She is the ruler over this battlefield. Light the affairs of wood. Miss Degenbrecher, dare to even begin to scorn her, and you two are an affront to her. You'd best hope <gasps> your own life is meant as little to you. <laughs> Steady now, De Madam Degenbrecher. If my subordinates have cooked up, cocked up talks with you, then it falls to me to apologize in their stead. Oh, you? And how long can you shield them for? Well, haha. <laughs> My I suggest until I die a soldier's death. Uh, I'm no match for you, my, <laughs> for your namesakes. Clearly, I've not the horns to lock with you in the fight. Do you recall, Madam Deckermarker, when I asked you about your name? I no longer see any time with the present. Might I be elucidated? You have the guts to stall him with me. <sighs> Two of them might can spare a word in no man's land. It is, it is done. You know, it's. The done thing. I barely even remember my real name. You can pretend I never had one. Plenty of people in Lithanians ruined streets were without a name or a home. I'd heard tell of your Lithanian birth, but never would imagine that to be your life story. I once read in the dailies of how you pil pilgrimed home there. Oh my god, I keep burping. Adulation of the masses, dinners with the upper crust. Throw a trophy at a burden beast and watch them love it too. They don't tell the difference. Don't let it fool you. It's not a place where I names change anything. No one's going to ask you when you're down in the gutter at the wastewater. Yet now your name with such power. Power? Not exactly. It was a sunny day. A Gendarmerie patrol rounded up anyone with no place to go on the corner. One of them was carrying a strange weapon I'd never seen before. No point, no edge. No fine combat technique, no deep method to it. No simpler way to bludgeon. No part was anything to mention. I watched as he took that thing to anybody who tried to resist and caved in their skulls. From that moment on, it's been clear to me what I have. 
Not a code or a creed or a technique. Nothing that sounds nice out loud. It's violence. So that day, I named myself. I am what I wield. Huh, there's a Minoan school of thought. Minoan school of thought, where they hold violence and victory as sisters. The two are inseparably close. They make one another. I'll look at you and I could be convinced. My mouse stopped working. Madam Degenbrecher, if you're the violence in the flesh like you say, then who exactly is your victory dedicated to? And finally, one last little quibble from me. Though, I do think that it may not be worth much in the asking. That Gender Gendermare eh, who first enlightened you was victory a sister to him too. I did like his Degenbrecher's. Could have used, but broke too fast. Just like you, Kragavon. Your arm's almost gone. Huh. Hush. Hush, hush, Madam Megenbrecher. Spare me the truth. I do happen to be command of my own regiment. A little dignity, if you please. Were the clock turned back 30? No. So just 20 years ago, I'd only be too glad to be your opponent. But as it stands, and though I hate to admit it, the reality's all too obvious. I'm one of the old ones now. You don't look it. Haha. <laughs> you think so, too? Then I take it back. See, I've been telling them all, my mind's as sharp as ever. It's just this blasted prosthetic leg. The socket always stings on rainy days. Less talk. How long until you give up? How long until I give in is hardly important. What matters is, Madam Daggerbrecher, how long until you give? You can try me and see. Is Karagander gonna reveal herself and protect everyone again or something? Now both sides have made their move. It seems Degenbreckers can still bear out for the moment. Harold is saving his strength, and his bombers and casters are all but smelling the roses. You, your wine may not have been wasted after all, Enciodes. What of Weiss and Matterhorn? I've sent a team of Shigata to find them. Given what reports have returned so far, the two were likely taken by surprise. Viscount Gregavon wouldn't place them in mortal danger. That takes sen senility, and he has none. Uh, we can only hope. Our people are on route. Are on route to the station to stand by. We'll send us. They'll send us a word immediately once they intercept. May it be that our guest arrives on time. What of the merchants that have contacted you? They don't be too daring for now. Gnosis, pass word onto the Saintus for me. You can save that step. I'm right here. If you have something to say, say it to me in person, Sir Enciodes. Saintus. The Silver Ashes are disgraced to have allowed such a spiral of events on ceremony grounds. Once the ceremony is over, I will personally take myself to the Vine Bear Court to apologize to you, Saintus. But for now, I fear the ceremony will have to be postponed for another while. As it should. Your message is loud and clear, Sir Enciodes. If there is anything I can do, I ask you to continue to come to me directly. And to not exploit my own conscience. Oh, right, I put it in my pocket. I keep, like, fiddling with my own fingers and it hurts trying to hurt. And not exploit that my own conscience might force me to see you first. Saintus, praise by, <laughs> praise thy benevolence. But you and the court devotees must be prudent right now. After you res resume, resume <laughs> this ceremony yourself, Saintus, this, that will suffice to appease the people. Degenbrecker's strength needs no introduction. A promise from her is exceedingly rare, and in the event she makes one, it's never broken. I think we should give her our full confidence. Is your confidence that Degenbrecker can f fight one against a thousand, or is that she has the disregard to die valiantly in perfect service to your schemes? Degenbrecker is ahead confronting the Victorians, and I know her mentality. She holds that, her own reputation aside, the slate with Kerrig can still be wiped clean should anything go wrong. She, wait, did she tell you this herself? She defends Kerrig's dignity as one of her plain, ordinary citizens. Citizens, citizens. Saintus, do you believe that I bluntly ordered her? Provoked her? Even I might say she's changed some. Thus, I've trusted her this once. I've gambled on her. Had I not, you might have... You might have watched the affable discount lose his life to a few panicked tourists. We gamble for a best-case scenario. Gamble. I have always considered the success or failure of anything to hinge on one's own grasp, and not entreaties of gods. 
Nothing goes unaccounted for. I put all the chips down. I see it through. Win or lose. I've never complained about it. But, Sir Enciodes, unclasp your hands. You've proved yourself. I I ask you pray for Degenbrecker, Great Saintess. He's actually worried for her. What's Matterhorn? Weiss! Wake up, Weiss! Oh, it's the courier, yeah. Matterhorn? Where are I? Shit! The Victorians are cha changing it up! Their goal can't be that simple! We have to contact the master! K his. Uh, stay still, Wiss. If they manage to. If they even manage to subdue and lock up both you and me, then our squad's people can't even escape either. I've tried, but brute strength, brute strength alone isn't going to free us. It's light outside. It looks like the day is. It's already day. Where are the Victorians? All gone. Unfortunately, they've probably swarmed the ceremonial grounds. Matterhorn, help me out of here. What do you need? I hide a razor in my shoe's upper. If you can just take it out, Matterhorn, and toss me it. Don't be insane! What are you using that razor for? In your position, do you not value your hands? I have to try. The master gave me this mission, and I can't I couldn't complete it. And if that's forced him into a passive situation, then I in any case, even if I'm too late and he doesn't need me, I'm still going to redeem what I isn't lost. I have to make up for my disappointment. I suppose you're right. Matterhorn heaves his body around, laying his hands over the curve of Wace's boot. But what follows betrays Wace's hope. He doesn't toss the razor over, but instead pinches the paper-thin tool of murder between his fingers and with great effort strains and slashes the rope over Wace's wrist. With his tenuous grip, the blade slips down between his fingers and cut into the pulp. Vivid red blood trickles down the wrist. Matterhorn! Your hand! It'll be fine. It's just a scratch. You were going to do the same thing, weren't you? You do have a point, Whis. The master is expecting us. We can't leave him waiting too long. Just give me one moment, and I can get this rope cut. Matterhorn. Um. Hmm. Who's there? Oh, it's her. Monch. <laughs> I'm not your enemy. Sorry. You two were having a moment, weren't you? Monch. Didn't you leave Carrick? About that. Well, I'll explain in full later. Madam Sirius. Who sent me out to scout? That's how I found you all tied up in this Victorian camp. Who are the others? I already set them free. Anyway, both of you, get going. The Victorians kicked off a battle at Lake Silbernahers. We need to be there as soon as possible. Damn it, she can't hold for long. As if I can sit here and look on. You get back here, Arctaz. Do you seriously think that you have the monopoly on righteous anger, Arctaz? We wish we could step in. If your eyes are shot, then try using your brain. Your acting will definitely ruin things. Stooping behind others so I can feel sorry for myself runs counter to the Peril Rouge clan's blood. I can't bear to see this. Bear to see it, you baby. Someone here is having a harder time watching it than you, I guarantee. Ten years that Degenbrecker's living caring, hasn't she? Just to be some sacrificial pawn here? If today NCOs can't settle all this, then no amount of achievement, no spoil for Kierig, could ever convince me to lend him an ear again. I'm far from the grand actor the rest of you would be. I cannot be as calm as you, any of you are. And it's a little too... It's too little too late for that. All you and I can do is believe in her. Dagenbrecker, the OP bastard... I wouldn't be arranging treatment for your wounded hands then. Remember to hide with the glove. What? Hide it with gloves when the time comes. Also, I imagine the Shigata report aligns with your gut. We can't count on Degenbrecker lasting much longer. She's no longer evading. She's acting how she used to in her Kazimir's competition days, only afterwards. Afterwards, as she fled the assassins with you, she amended that habit. Any lack of care by her at that point, and you'd die sooner than she did. Quite. Still, no word from your end? None. My investigators already returned. <sighs> They're sure your guest boarded the train in question to say Lake Silbrenna hers. If anything, it should have been arrived just as the ceremony would wound down. As it is, I'll still take some time until the train arrives. It'll take some time for the train to arrive. I see. Gnosis, never have I 
feared any wager. Every step I, I take, that I've ever taken, I've staked it all. This time is no different. I know. I believe myself to be sufficiently prepared. And yet, I find my patience is made of poorer stuff. Thank you for calling me what, telling what's on your mind. And I know what you want to hear me say. I'll say it for you. If you want to ensure the Black Knight's life, or you don't believe she can last until the end, then give the order now. I can tell you there are still odds of success. The archers and casters at our call are best of the best. Blow up the lake's surface, create confusion, and draw the civilians and soldiers both into Midwinter's icy pocket. And so, it's, the decision lies with you. Whatever you do, I will support it. But whatever you do, you carry the consequences in kind. Those consequences are no simple political game. You might fail to even bear them. That I can determine for you. One quick question. If it were you, then the Great Winter Swim would already be in full swing. Ha. <laughs> Let's trust in Degenbrecker. Trust she won't fall. Degenbrecker is such a cool character. Like, I always thought she was cool from all the parts that I've read. At some unknown point, the first wound appears on her body. It lies about her shoulder, a slash over her suit, an imperceptible trace of blood drawn. Compared to the kinds of wounds she's used to, this one's not even worth mentioning. Degenbrecker falls, fells the few soldiers about her. Ironically, the subtle sting only sharpens the heady mix of fear her eyes strike into you, makes her movements that much more steely cold. The second win wound is brought by an Originium Arts. An average caster means nothing to Degenbrecker, but the numbers advantage mutates the nature of Originium's arts of efficacy. The casters among the troops cast behind their human wall, fire, ice, thunder, burst forth in unison with staggering momentum. Degenbrecker flings her weapons, running one of the caster's soldiers clean through, while she stubbornly approaches through the full length of their arts range and plows straight into the soldier's midst. Midst. That puts an end to the death display. The third boom comes from an artilleryman aim a third ballista volley at her. An opponent armed with to the teeth is no fear of Degenbrecker's. But with limbs less than free, the and ballista pestering her in spades, it does get a little annoying to cope. A shell slips through and lands a scorch mark on her abdomen. Her skin is seared in an instant, but hardly any blood comes. That's good, all things considered. Degenbrecker is under no impression she'll lose. She's just not too sure how she has enough blood to last much longer. The fourth wound, the fifth. She loses track. Counting them is pain. It's not enough. Again! <laughs> Urgh! Lisburn! Charles! Withdraw Lisburn into the rear! You staunch his bleeding. I'll be right there with first aid. Yeah, Degenbrecker! <laughs> She's giving out! Now's our chance! Charge! Ha! Huh. As long as I can still move a finger! Ah! I can handle any of you! Madam Degenbrecker! Surely you're reaching your limits, too! If you really meant to fight us out and out, you wouldn't have drawn out this situation in the first place! Fight like this any longer, and I fear death will come for somebody. Isn't that exactly the kind of war you Victorians make an art of starting? The only difference here is, your opponent is me alone. Harold, you're a soldier, and I am your enemy. <laughs> and kingly put, Madam Degenbrecker, but I don't believe for a second that you're blind to it. Carlin Trade's private operations were ferreted out by the Trilby Ashers, and I don't think the Duke will rest on her laurels about it. That <laughs> is Enciode's problem. This is very last chance they're leaving Master Enciode's. He need only bend an ear to the Duke. He only need part with that sliver of that cake. Be it just 30% of what we proposed, I could still take that back to the Duke and try, for heaven's sake. This was never even a war you needed to win. Oh, stupid. Who do you say, who do you say that as? Your window dressing... You're a tourist. You're a burden beast vet. Have you been at leisure for so long you've begun to believe your own lies? No. You've never forgotten who you are. You hate war. Absolutely. 
You abandoned what real power was in your hands. You took what men of yours synthesized, synthesized, sympathized, not photosynthesis. You left the ma maelstrom far behind and fled to Kierig, to a land where you thought war could never really happen. But you were still a Victorian inside. No, it wasn't even something you had to remind yourself. You might say that. I am a Victorian soldier, madam. That much is ordained, and I might loathe it, and I might flee it, but I can never solely Victoria's interests. Good. I'm the same. Is she the same as the Vic this Victorian? They don't seem very identical. She's Lithuanian born, Casimir's raised, and only then came to Tarig. They don't need to know her name. All they know is that she's born to fight solo, a victor of the night competitions, the only one to ever win three years running. Turn the clock further back and she's a freak cut off from original marks. A pariah and Lithuanian. Gaining and losing any of those things is a dead simple. Is dead simple. They bore her to death. But now, what she has isn't so easily lost, and she has no plans to lose them. Now, they are the same. This dull chat <coughs> ends here. I feel all too sorry for you, Madam Dagenbrecker. Oh, would that would that we hadn't come to this point? But if you wish it, then I choose to respect it. I must stress at this closing hour that I am, through and through, your fan. The show you made is best to seeing each opponent dazzled like nothing else. This and this alone, I ask you to believe. I cannot be lied. Ha. <laughs> Noted. It's my honor. Riddled with scars, she raises her Degenbreckers once more. Just as she did in her first appearance before them all, Degenbreckers point stabs into the ice. The mist, constant over Lake Silbernaher's parts. A subdued gargantuan rumble sinks in her enemy's stomachs. There comes the fine sound of ice cracking, and it's deafening. Time to end this. Order to all units! Stop her breaking the ice! Regroup ASAP! Put the black put down the black knight of Casimirs. Nothing. It's not in here. Oh, and it's not here either. Well, that just leaves. Excuse me, sir, the train is speeding up. If you must wander, then please watch your step. Oh, right, you haven't received your complimentary gift yet, have you? What, what is, I asked, would you like? As compensation for your journey's delay, your purchase is completely free this time. No need. But sir, it's a free gift. Then I give this gift to you, madam. Uh, but that's not, take it. Now, excuse me, if I could pass through. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, oh, what in the land? What? My legs are a little wobbly. Bruh. He's got the riz. Now, only the last cabin remains. After all, this time running around, I'm ragged. I could retire. Ugh. Now when Lond Londinium's still you're finding its footing refinding her its footing her grace would never let me what will I find behind this door their Keurig defense hidden until this very moment very deeper than even their covert transport routes whatever it is it's a shame it's a shame Silver Ash will never get to meet his uh <laughs> What the fuck? Huh? What's up, Panisco? <laughs> Sorry, we've got no seats left in our cabin. I think you want to try someplace else. Uh, actually, I can just leave. <laughs> what is this? Do you need something, Panisco? I'm not kidding, we're full in here. I mean, you can see, we're bumping shoulders just trying to look around. Yeah, that's why I'm saying I can absolutely just leave and find my own seat. 
I'm not kidding either. Y you guys seriously don't gotta sit in a cab with me. Don't be like that, Mr. Spokesperson. You and us, we're invited together, aren't we? It was all one letter. And this cabin perfectly amount of room for us all to sit. They <laughs> look after you on the way. And with us around, the safety problem is no problem. Safety's not my problem here. Yeah, no. I don't think it's perfect, it's is the thing. You guys get to sit on the benches and I have to dump my butt on a table. Apologies, excuse me. A spokesperson for what? I see, I understand. I must be dreaming. Casimir's campaign nights and a KGCC representative spokesperson sat in the same private cabin on a railway car. So this is the defense Silver Ash plays. How bold, how well and truly typical of the clan head's style. Your Grace, I can't say that it was for lack of trying, but while duties might call me for to fight a gaggle of campaign nights at once, I think it's a little out of question. More than a little. I guess your job's not easy either. Ace? Oh. I was like, what the fuck? Stay calm. Just passing through. That uniform. This is quite the surprise party. What is Rhodes Islander doing here? <laughs> You'll have to ask my boss. The two casters lackey. Any questions, Mr. Bellingham? Many happy returns, Doctor. And we have Rhodes Island operator here. It seems the dossiers were right. We still haven't full stock of your company's many faces. Still, that aside for now. No surprise could be more pleasant meeting you here, in all sincerity. I come with open arms this time. After all, I'm not even out I'm not even out of this disguise and you recognize me by bit. Rose Island, you Yeesh, doctor, a little help here? You'll see Oh, who are you? Hmm. Sup Our stop's coming up. We gotta get the tech packed, Doc. Oh, where are you guys? It's Leto! Doctor, maybe we ought to bug the conductor to go a little faster? Hey, it's you! Rhodes Island and Columbia's Rhine Lab. Well, well, well. I see it's no coincidence. You're all here, then. Oh, jeez. I guess someone knows me already. Doc, Mr. Sharp, Leto Bomb. Aren't you gonna introduce this Hatsy guy to me here? What is going on? Char, I'd like to know, would Karen Gonder bless the woman waging such a bloody battle for the statue? Though she is born from other lands, though in Karagander, she has oh so little faith. <laughs> That's a very easy question, Saintus. The term Karag simply means one who lives there, who adores this land, who finds a home in this nation. It's no matter whether Karagander recognizes it. If a person identifies with it from the bottom of their heart, well, who can deny that? Yes. No one can deny that. Even she. Not even she herself. She's a, a Kiara. She already was. Kiar, come with me to meet our visitors. Our Victorian guests have come to partake in the ceremony. Yes, Saintus? I have to make an adequate response. The music's nice. At the very least, I can't go without saying hello. I'd like to stress the danger of this, but very well, Saintus. I mean, come on. They have. A, she has a little old god next to her. What is? What are they gonna do to her? Matriarch, Sirius is back. She is? Some nerve being late. Wait, no. I told her to keep out of this. Why didn't she come here? Who's saying I can't come? And I didn't just come. I brought some special guests with me too. Is this let's bring guests timing to you? You make a language out of inane. You silly sister. I am not being silly. Oh, Enciots. Indeed, Madam Sirius is and is deft and wise. I find her admirable. Rotados. You do well to finally raise your opinion of her. What the hell is this, Enciodes? Madam Sirius, the guests have arrived safely. Good, bring them all in. I'm out. <laughs> Master, your guests are here already. You're who? These are my guests I invited. You're Madam Sirius of the Brown Tail Clan? Very pleased to invite us to be a part of the ceremony. Serious, is this your pleasant surprise? Uh, duh. Let me introduce you all. We have our campaign night from the Adeptus 
Sprawidly the Kazimiers here to celebrate the erection of our statue to Karagondor. I sent an invitation, especially to the Adeptus. That was not an easy invitation to make. So they're my guest. It's just a coincidence, Madam Sirius. I cannot lodge you enough. Load you enough. That, what? That you were able to invite a campaign night. My guest of honor, meanwhile, would be this fellow. Welcome, Sir Spokesman of the General Chamber of Commerce. Hello to you. I'm taking it you're Mr. Silver Ash? Good. Good to meet ya. Good to meet ya. And hello from my company. Thank you all for the effort of inviting me to Kierig. Fuck! I dropped it again. The scenery here is... The scenery here in Kierig is supremely beautiful. I believe your company and mine will absolutely end the day here with a partnership we both love. Oh, and don't mind me, but I gotta say, I think I saw some mad fight out on the Elherson Lake the whole way here. And kind of uh, familiar too, like one guy, I mean, those combat moves, they rang bells in my head. Oh, sorry. Excuse me if I'm talking too much. It's uh, a holdover from the old job. <laughs> right. I'll be careful not to say too much that doesn't work towards us working together. No, Mr. Mob. I'm in need of your exact talent right now. Come again? You need? Yes. Right now, this is very moment. Please, come with me. I'll have them cast sound amplification arts. May I ask you to loudly proclaim that Carlin Trade and the Cor Corporations of Casimir's General Chamber of Commerce are about to sign an agreement. The Casimir's Sherig Gerig will become a trusty partner. So we had a plan all along. What's that noise? It's not anyone splashing into the ice water. It's not cries for help. It sounds like someone's loudly saying something and then people are all about her stumble into disarray. That loud voice, but whatever it's saying, she can't tell clearly. Her field of view narrows and dims by a fraction more. The sounds almost turn to fuzz in her ears. She can't feel her own limbs anymore, but she can be sure that she still has a grip on her old companions, her Dagenbreckers, because she knows her body is still acting on reflex, striking down every person that comes near. It's just too loud, too loud. How could someone talk this noisily? Why has the crowd gone? Did someone branch, breach her line of defense already? No. The wild beast's dulling eyes of gold suddenly flare a light. As long as she can stand, she will allow absolutely no one past. Brecker, Madam Degenbrecker! Stop fighting! Gah! You've lost too much blood, Madam Degenbrecker. Come to your senses a little. Ah, ah, ah! So keep flailing at this rate and you'll sink us both into the lake! You were not fighting? No more fighting. No more. Goodness. However much the Duke wants to slap Kierig in the face, we can't be sh <laughs> showing Kazimir's the hand in the process. At least not now. Kept between Victoria and Kierig. One might still call it the Duke's personal Silver Ash grievances, but the moment you bring Kazimir's into it too, things become far, far less simple. Are the Gormans of Kazimir's already inviting Carlin Trade to the table? With such distance between them, and in such short order? What a talented young individual. And I know the Duke won't approach me for deciding to stay my hands, biffing excuse. A good half of my men you batted into the lake, Madam Dagenbrecker, was a backbreaker to scoop them out again. If we'd kept going like that, I'd need another pair of arms to treat you all. I'd say you need them as is. <laughs> I take no criticism from anyone still hacking up blood. We're done. Well and truly. Okay. NCO has pulled it off. She did what she needed to do. That's all Degen Brecker hears. Now, madam, stop there. The lives we live, they always tend to be out of our hands. I wanted to retire eons ago myself, but I have to keep my own men, my all too often down and out brothers, in mind. With this, it finally ought to be my turn for once, hmm? And, in light of the fact that your faithful fans have been beaten black and blue, could you give me your autograph? You're still in the mood for that? This card. <laughs> Do tell? The first time I won the Major, they wouldn't leave me alone until I agreed to a photo shoot. After that, I never agreed to do another one. They were too boring for me. I see. No wonder the Black Knight's trump card... 
What the hell? No wonder the Black Knight Trumps always come in those same poses, edition after edition. Dagen Brecker accepts the pen Harold holds out to her and writes her name, Dagen Brecker. Take it. You'd better not have anything else for me to sign. Ah, madam, where are you going? Do you need some quick treatment? My first aid's excellent, you know. Dagen Brecker lifts her head to look to the dawn. In the distance, two figures walk, approaching her. She still can't make them out, but she knows who they are. It's like Kiaragander on high is gazing down on her. Some place as high as the sun. No need. I'm going back. There's people waiting for me. She's being accepted no, by her people. my fortune telling isn't all. Oh, wow. Okay, there's more story. It's currently 2 a.m. Or 1 a.m. I don't have time to read through it right now. So, I'll read that last story bit uh, another time, I think. This was amazing. Period. Like, this was amazing. I don't know what else to say about it, even. I had so much fun playing this event. Um... And Degenbrecker being accepted by the people around her is so nice. Even though she didn't, like, ask for it, it still, like, happened that way. And, like, the people around her care for her and want her to do well. And so much so that Enciodes put, like, his quarrel with his sister down just to ask for a blessing on Degenbrecker. And then the doctor showing up, I wasn't expecting... Well, I guess I was because Leto was talking about it earlier, but, like doctor showing up. I guess I'll find out in this last bit. I'm just out of time, unfortunately. And if I read it now, it'll be like a two-hour long video. Um, yeah. That was really, really good. And I'm gonna finish this story part tomorrow. I'm probably just gonna, like, wake up in the morning and just record it immediately, because that is a lot of fun. That's the end of the video, though. So, if you like the video, like and subscribe. I'd love to have you around. The I'll have the Discord linked in the description, and same with the Ko-Fi. If you want to support the GoFi, go on ahead. Uh, otherwise, follow. You'll be able to see the thumbnails early that way. Um, also, in case you ever noticed, I have green eyes. So when I green screen my green screen out, it gets rid of my eyes. So if it ever looks creepy and you're wondering what's going on, I have green eyes. And it, like, fucks up my eyes really weird when I get rid of the green screen behind me. <laughs> um, that's it for me, though. So you better have a good night. And bye-bye. I should probably actually wait. Bye-bye!